Hey, Fabio. Hey, boss. What's going on? How are you? Good. Ready for module B? Yeah. Yes. More encephalopathy. IEG reports are getting on point. Let's see some IEDs. Let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, so let's just start with um, what are epileptiform discharges? Uh, what are they? So doc, Dr. Jing Jing, our colleague and friend and mentor, tells me a story that when she came to work with you, you said that um, epileptiform discharges are those waveforms that if you if you set on them, they would... They bulk your behind. She um, loves that story. And it just summarizes the whole module. So we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we talk about, you know, how frequent they, frequently they occur. So abundant is more than one every 10 seconds, um, but not periodic. And then um, frequent means at least one per minute, but not one every 10 seconds. And then uh, occasional is at least one per hour, but not more than one per minute. And then rare is less than one per hour. So this would be when you're reading, you know, EEGs that are longer than 10 seconds, <laughs> then you can use these terms. We're talking here about sporadic epileptic discharges. So this is uh, a distinction between, um, we're making a distinction between um, these, which are kind of occurring at random intervals to um, ones that occur at very regular intervals. Those are called periodic. We'll see those later. Oh, there they are. Oh, right here. This is later. <laughs> so these ones, yeah, these are periodic discharges, the top PD. Um, so what that means is that the, each one of these is a distinct discharge. Um, these each a little triangle, and then you can see a, like a little wiggly line in between them. Mm -hmm. So um, so they have a little pause between the, before they happen again, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, down below, there's something called spike wave, where there's a spike and then a round thing, and then a spike and a round thing with no little wiggly line in between so no no pause at all and uh, so we we distinguish these two things periodic discharges and then spike wave pattern of uh discharges got it and how many do you need to count as periodic again because i forgot six okay. magic number got it okay so back to your sporadic um definition and our duration definition. So here we have an example of a, a discharge that lasts um, less than 70 milliseconds between 20 and 70. So it's spiky, hurts a lot. Um, if it's not left from discharge, it's a sharp wave. It's between 70 and 200 milliseconds in duration. So as you can see, it's fatter here. Um, and it still hurts, but not as much. Yeah. And then we have the poly spikes that are just a family of spikes back to back, really close together in the same kind of complex. Um, so that's an example. And what's the last one? Those are, they could still be discharges. So this is a sharply contoured wave, but it's, its waist is too large to fit in the mm -hmm. pants of a spike or a sharp wave. Yeah. So they're a discharge, but not epileptiform, is that what you mean? Right. Correct. Right. Got it. Yep. So they have different types, they have different flavors. Yeah. And that's based on where they come from, is that correct? Mm hmm Yeah. They come from one mm -hmm. continent, they're called one thing, and another continent, another world, they're called a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So if you look at the cosmos of the brain, if it's in <laughs> our cosmos, it's generalized, right? I guess so. <laughs> so entire brain. Blowing my mind. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> If it's one portion of the brain's focal, so I think the multifocal for the ACNS um, team is when there's three foci independently generating discharge, epileptiform discharges, two of which are on one side, one hemisphere, and then the other one is in the, on the control outer hemisphere. Is that right? Okay. I think in common usage, um, I think two different foci would also count, um, but maybe it's not so consistent. So yeah, to, so we'll say, so two or I think two not not synchronized sources, I would usually call multifocal, mm -hmm. uh, but I would just say there's two. <laughs> and then if there's a whole bunch, when you don't want to describe them all, you would 
use multifocal that informally, but yeah, I think your the formal definition is what you just said. Great. Okay. So start with ah. generalized. Beautiful. What do you think? Yeah. So th this is a good example of a uh, little complex of generalized spikes, uh, spike and wave discharges. And let's see, how many are there in, in uh, one second? It's one, two, I think there's three. So this is a classic three Hertz generalized spike and wave um, pattern and it's frontally predominant as they often are. Mm -hmm. So probably a patient with an idiopathic generalized epilepsy. So these are generalized and now we can look at some focal discharges, which are very similar, except for the fact that they're coming from one particular area of the brain. They're not in all channels at the same time, just like the previous example. So here we have a one spike and wave discharge. You can see the spike portion of it and then this after going slow wave. It's on the right temporo, parietal, occipital, posterior quadrant on the right side. Mm -hmm. um, you can see a little bit of the midline too, and it's a focal discharge. Cool. So this is, oh, this is just the same to help us localize a little bit better. So yeah. average mm -hmm. referential montage, um, highest amplitude being at O2. So my, my gestalt was kind of right. So it's uh, more so in the right occipital region, also involving the field to posterior temporal and parietal. And actually you can see it on, uh, as you can see it on O1 as well here in this montage. Oh yeah, right there. That's it. Yeah. Cool. So that's a focal discharge. Now, multifocal, what are those again? Forgot? Yeah. So let's see where these are located. So we've got, um, and they're helpfully colored in as they often are. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so we see one at the F84 electrode. So that's probably maybe around, yeah. Uh, so the le right frontal, mm -hmm. there's some discharges. And then if we look on the left, let's see. Um, are they always synchronous? This one seems to be, is that? Yeah, so I think if you look at the neighbor, there's some other examples of that discharge. If you go to, yeah, to the left and to the right that don't co-occur with the one on the right side. So mm -hmm. these are, this seems to be probably an independent focus. Um, it can have discharges when they're not occurring on the other side. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's left and right. Um, oh, here's a good example. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. There's a left-sided one. Yeah. Um, okay. So good, yeah. So there's uh, there's at least two foci here. Mm -hmm. And is there a third focus? Um, huh. uh, I think this is yeah. really, uh, so we have, yeah, I think this is two foci. Right, I think so too. So yeah. I would usually call this multifocal. Sounds like sticklers at the ACNS might not call it that. Yeah. I think they would call it maybe bilateral and independent. Bifocals. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So let's, let's wrap up and I'll start with the last one there because they're, they're more fun. So if we're using the ACNS criteria, then it means that there are, there are at least three independent foci producing discharges, two of which are on one side. If there's three, two of, two of them will be on one hemisphere, the other one will be on the other contralateral hemisphere. And then if we're using the non-ACNS criteria, it means that there's at least two independent foci generating discharges. Yep. Good. And then so focal uh, epileptoform discharges would be, um, yeah, discharges coming from one location on you know, on one hemisphere, but not the other hemisphere. You know, usually, usually pretty well localized. So usually not the whole hemisphere. Usually just either frontal or temporal or occipital, something like that. Okay. And then those nice generalized discharges we looked at. As a general sense, they come from the both hemispheres synchronically at the same time. If they're more with the genetic generalized epilepsies 
They can be predominantly in the frontal regions, both sides, but they're happening at the same time from both hemispheres. That's the underlying concept. Cool. That's a wrap. Got it.